I've always been interested in prophecy, so I've heard a lot of strange things over the years. I've seen a lot of movements come and go. Predictions about the end, the day the world was supposed to end, but none of it ever came true. I've read so many books on the key to understanding Revelation, but they didn't really explain anything at all. It finally occurred to me that something is very wrong with the way that we do prophecy. But how can we do it right? Years and years ago, I was working in New York City. I was still a new Christian at the time. A co-worker invited me to her church. It was a small black church way out in Long Island. The preacher preached for months on the book of Revelation. I can't remember much of what he said anymore, although I wish I could. But one night, he was preaching on Revelation chapter 12. And he used a verse from the Old Testament to interpret the book of Revelation. It fit like a lock in a key. I thought, that's it. That's the way to interpret Revelation. After that, I went to seminary. I learned Hebrew. I learned Greek. I studied in Israel. I became a missionary in the Philippines. And I started to teach Revelation. And I used the Bible to interpret the Bible. I was amazed at how well it worked everywhere. There wasn't a single vision or even a part of a vision that didn't refer back to some other part of the Bible. And it wasn't random. The matches were always very clear. And it always made the visions make so much sense. It seemed so obvious. Then I got worried. How can I be the only one to see this? Am I missing something? So I started to research the earliest Christian writings about Revelation. And I was amazed how often their interpretations matched mine. Even the method of interpreting the Bible with the Bible is mentioned by Hippolytus, by Augustine. Then I started teaching it as a seminar when I went around raising money for our missions work. I thought I'd probably get the right foot of fellowship, if you know what I mean. But it made sense to people. A lot of the pastors I spoke to were uncomfortable with the methods of interpretation that they'd heard before. They saw the weaknesses in dispensationalism, which is right now the most popular method of interpretation. But they didn't have anything to replace it. When they heard the method of Bible interpreting Bible, they got it. It made sense. This was something they could do themselves and feel confident about. I was amazed how well this teaching was received. This book won't tickle your ears. The early Christians knew that hard times were coming for the church. And many Christians are experiencing those hard times right now today in many places in the world. Persecution is increasing around the world. But the early church prepared for that. We need to prepare too. Because as Jesus said, night is coming when no man can work. It's all there in Revelation. It's so clear. All the obstacles, all the dangers, and what to do about them. So much of it is about deception. Things appearing good, even Christian, when they're really not. People need to know about that. They need to be ready when bad things start to happen. Some of them have already started. But the end is so amazing, so awesome. It will be well worth it in the end. The only way to correctly understand the book of Revelation is from the point of view of the culture that created it. It's a Jewish writing, written by a Jewish believer in Jesus. It's from a time when the church was still strongly influenced by Jewish culture and Jewish religion. There are allusions to Jewish festivals, to Jewish uh, ceremonies in the temple, to even the clothing that the priests were wearing. But most important, it's filled with allusions to other parts of the Bible. It's like a compendium of all the prophecies that had not yet been fulfilled at that time. Now it's just amazing that somebody could take all those prophecies and put them together like that and have them fit. I really don't see how anybody could do that without divine help. The more I study Revelation, the more I believe it really is a revelation from God. John really saw those visions. Let me give you an example. You know the scroll with seven seals, right? Well, Revelation never tells us what that is or what it means. It acts as if we're already supposed to know. And we would know if we knew our Bibles really well. The scroll is written on both sides. Now, that was really unusual in those days because usually they only wrote on one side of the scroll. 
Well, if you look in the Bible, if you look in the concordance, you'll quickly find that there's only two other places in the Bible that mention a scroll written on both sides. And that's in Ezekiel and in Zechariah. It's the scroll of God's judgment. They fit together perfectly, like a lock and a key. And this happens over and over and over again. Before long, the visions start opening up. They start making sense. They're not just bizarre images. They're fully biblical teachings expressed in a visionary way. But this was written with an incredible sense of urgency. You know, John was in prison at the time. Christians were already being persecuted. They needed to know why this was happening. They needed to know how to survive as Christians. They knew that some prophecies were already being fulfilled all around them. But they just needed the big picture. But there was something more. There was something even more dangerous that was coming in the future. Something even more deceptive. And this, you could say, is one of the major messages of Revelation. The mystery of religious deception, which of all the dangers in the world, is the greatest danger for Christian believers because it affects our eternity. This is not just something that's going to suddenly appear a couple years before Jesus comes. It already started a long time ago. It's institutional. It's historical. It's even political. And it keeps getting worse and worse. Few people understood this part of the message of Revelation until the 1500s in the, in the Reformation. But since then, many have forgotten it. And the deception is spreading. The church is in a very dangerous place today. All the pieces are coming together. Europe is reuniting. Israel is back in place. The Jewish Christians have returned, the Messianic Jews. The One World Initiatives keep getting stronger and stronger. The UN, the World Bank, International Court of Justice, and so many others. Very difficult times are coming. But most Christians have no idea about this. They're not preparing spiritually for what's coming. They have teachers telling them that everything's going to be all right, that there's not going to be any problem. If only that were true. But more and more people are realizing that that's not reality. That's not what the Bible says. We desperately need the book of Revelation. It's there to warn us of what's coming. It's there to tell us what to do and also to reassure us that no matter how bad it gets, God wins in the end. And all the difficulties and all the struggles, they'll be worth it. What can I say? You've got to check it out for yourself. It's not what I say that's important. It's what God says about His Word.